I'm JD the Media Jack and welcome to the next episode of the Media Jack podcast. Episode 5 featuring John Legendary, an adult film star with an incredible story. First, I want to thank yet again the executive producer for this episode, Red Wolf Dawn. If you'd like to help out and be an executive producer, get yourself a shout out and get a little bit of behind the scenes stuff, then just go to Patreon, search for the Media Jack. It just costs $2 a month to show your support. Secondly, there's a brand new way to show your support. It is through merch. The MediaJack.ca now has a merch store where you can get official Media Jack logo uh, t-shirt as well as a tank top. Perhaps you'd like a mug or there is venting as normal clothing as well. Check it out for yourself. The MediaJack.ca. We now have merch. Now on to my chat with adult film star John Legendary, a man who left his career, a successful and wild career in aerospace and defense industry to finally break into something he had a passion for and a curiosity for for a very long time. Here's John Legendary on the Media Jack podcast explaining this journey. Being in the, um, the, the adult industry, it was always like a, a dream. But one of those dreams that you never in your wildest dreams would think of happening. Mm -hmm. and, and so just having that nine to five um, corporate job, which, you know, has been very fruitful, always searching for something that was more, pa that I was more passionate about. And being, if you're not familiar with the hot wife lifestyle, um, I, I, I have been a bull in the hot wife lifestyle for quite some time. Okay. And what the hot wife lifestyle is, is where you're, you're engaged with a, a wife that likes to be shared. And, and the husband approves of that. He helps facilitate that. And you're in front of the camera often while the husband often films. And so just being comfortable in that environment where the husband is watching me fuck his wife. Mm. I just imagine that, you know, the natural progression, I could have a, a good shot at doing the dope. You're already, and, you're already performing as it were. <laughs> exactly. And I'm not getting paid for it, you know, yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm fucking this, you know, 45, 50 year old, you know, wife. Mm. Uh, you know, may, maybe uh, I could fuck some, you know, 25, 30 year old porn chick <laughs> and get compensated for it, you know, and doing something that I enjoy. And, you know, I thought that was like, you know, maybe I have an, an, a chance to do that. But but even still, I didn't think that it was remotely possible just considering that, hey, I don't have a 12 inch cock or, or no one knows me. and. Right. You know, I, I just I just didn't think it would happen. But in, in August of last year, I was on Twitter and I just started seeing, you know, some some performers and I'm like, man, I, 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 I kind of want to do that. And so I found my agent. I, I reached out to them online, did a little application, sent some like three photos. And then a week later, they gave me a call asked me some questions, did a little interview. And then a week after that, they set me up for a, um, to do my science on my contracts and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And then week after that, I was doing agency photos and, and maybe a week after I was doing my, you know, my, some, some, um, my first job, my first gig. And so that's kind of how it, it transitioned. Um, but even before that, me get into the hot wife lifestyle. I was um, in grad school and I was hanging out with one of my buddies and we had, you know, it was like one afternoon and we're just, you know, shooting the shit. And he had a young lady that said she was downstairs about to come up, you know, come, come up. And so I said, all right, man, I'm about to let you do your thing. I'll just catch you later. Right. And he was like, well, well, hold on, let, let me see something. And so this dude, he calls this this woman's husband. And I'm like, hey, um, <laughs> what are you getting me into? <laughs> he was like, he, he calls the husband and say, hey, my, my, my man's my buddy is here. Yeah. Like, is it OK if he stays? And the husband said, hell yeah. Is he black? Oh. Like, yeah. 
just make sure you take video and, and pictures. And so I'm like, oh shit, now it's getting real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, so we, me and my buddy, we, we ended up fucking his wife and took video pictures, husband loved it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like my head is spit. I'm like, what the fuck we just get into? <laughs> this is a thing? <laughs> oh my God, I was, I had all these questions and I got so excited. I'm right. like, I need more of this. I need, I need more of this. Let me know what this is. Where do I sign up? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how I got into the hot wife lifestyle. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so, so as you see, it's just been like more of a, a, a natural progression. We're, yeah. We're, so we're, we're just briefly touching on uh, your, your great school life. Were you, were you athletic? Like, did you have the athletic yeah. lifestyle and the build? Yeah, I, um, I, I went to college to run track. Oh, nice. So I was a mid middle distance runner. I ran the 800, mm -hmm. uh, the 1500. Yeah. So, but, uh, you know, that lasted maybe my first two, two or three years. And, and then I just kind of focused on like social life and, and, and business and, and right. you know, pleasure fraternity. And I, I was very big on campus in the, in the, I guess the business sense. I was like president of like different organizations and stuff like that. So, you know, a stark contrast to, to what I do now, but, you know, people knew me for being very wild. Oh, you know, okay. So, you know, I might, I might be on campus with a suit, but if you come to one of my house parties, I might be walking around the house, butt naked, <laughs> <laughs> with my dick out, just like, Hey, who's next? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, people always understood that dichotomy of, of myself. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so me being in porn is it's not a surprise to anyone you know my mother doesn't know mm. um yet hopefully she doesn't she ever she never finds out <laughs> but like my brothers and my fam my brother my brothers and my father they know so it's not a surprise to anyone because they they always know me to be like oh the wild black sheep right well, so you're essentially a performer at heart even at at, at the younger years being able to you know strip down buck naked and just be the center of attention while in enjoying that sort of spotlight is just, it seems as though that's just something that is just naturally you. When it comes to sex. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's so crazy. Like I'm the most shy, reserved person outside of sex. Oh. But when, when, when sex is involved, I'm like, Hey, where's the camera point here? I'm right here. You know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, but outside of sex, I'm I'm very quiet, reserved. You know, more of an observant um, individual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's interesting. There, I, you know, it makes sense though. There has to be a balance, even with your own life and your own priorities. You know, you can yeah. be, uh, you know, the center of attention in one uh, aspect of your life, while the other time you're you're pulled back and you're reserved just to try to find that center. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. So this is actually something that I wanted to uh, lead into because um, you're you're actually the first uh, male uh, adult performer that I've had a chance to, to speak with, and it's interesting after interviewing a whole bunch of female and a couple of trans performers uh, of seeing the the frustration of of people on social media where. Uh, a gentleman not unlike yourself wants to make it into the adult industry but is going about it the absolute wrong way the way that you describe it it's very much applying for a job you you fill out a form you contacted the right people you went and you know had an interview and a screening and uh, uh, the test shots and, and and such like that where are these young bucks on social media are like zip here's my dick you want to hire me and it just seems as though there's like always that lack of communication and understanding that this is a job you're applying for. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. like it's, do you, do you come across like, uh, uh, you know, guys, uh, like how do you do it? And what, what do I do? And yeah. I tried this, but, 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 but what happens there? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, if you look in a lot of different areas, especially when I look in my life, um, starting off in the lifestyle, you know, the, the, the swing hot wife lifestyle, right. You know, a lot of guys, everyone doesn't have success, in, even in that, right. 
you know, you know, some guys just get into like the lifestyle just to get laid because they can't get laid in any other circumstances. Okay. Like, like they're, they're not used to getting women. Right. And, 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 and it's a reason why, because they're, they're, they're not desirable, Mm. you know, for, you know, a variety of reasons, you know, whether it's how they present themselves, how they carry themselves, how, how they communicate, um, their attention to detail, um, their, their lack of awareness. It's just it's so many different reasons on in the, even in the lifestyle, um, they're seen as less desirable. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when I got into lifestyle, I say, okay, well, I need to really make sure that I'm projecting the right image that I think that I think will be desirable. And it's essentially just an extension of myself but more so just branding it, make, making sure if I'm on a, a little, uh, a lifestyle site, making sure that my profile is written well, making sure that I have good pictures that, you know, kind of accentuate what I'm offering. And, and so that was, that allowed me to have good success in the lifestyle. And I was able to get validations, which are essentially reviews of your, uh, experience or someone else's experience with you. Mm-hmm. And so basically I took that same ideology and use it to porn where, okay, if I'm presenting myself, I make sure that my bar- my branding is good. I'm, I'm displaying the type of uh, image that I want that I think that would be receptive for whatever niche that I feel that I can be successful in. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so you have to really understand you know, why you're doing what you're doing and, and who's your audience right. and, and, and then take it from there. But if you're just, even in like outside of porn, if I, if, a, if I just show my dick, okay, number one, dicks are not like the best looking thing. Okay? <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> you feel me? Yes. So if I show my dick to someone, to a female, to a young lady, it's like, well, it, it, how receptive do I expect her to be? Right. You know, <laughs> like, what's what's attached to the dick you know what, what, what's the personality of the guy right and so it's like what like it does no one any good to just show a dick right but what if i'm showing that hey he's a cool guy you know he dresses well his hygiene is good he's smelling good you know he's rocking some 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 really good cologne his 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 uh you know his uh mannerisms are good mm-hmm. his ch- charisma like just He's not as know, dumb as a brick <laughs> exactly. you know, some, some type of intellect can carry a conversation yeah if that's on point then you can get you can get women yes okay and so it's the, it's the same type of concept how do you market yourself how do you bring yourself you know like i see some guys take these these will these weird uh pictures and videos of their junk but it's like over the toilet seat like, that's not even how you take a dick pic. No, you know, no. Okay. Take, take a good dick pic. You know, it's rooms to that, even right. in itself. So, I mean, so, so, so my point is, you just have to know how to market yourself. You know how, have to know who your audience is, your target audience, mm. and then take it that way. You know, you, you can't just think that your dick alone is going to be your way into porn. I mean, you yes, your dick has to stay hard, and it has to be able to pop when the director wants you to pop right so those are two important things but to to, when you're trying to get into it you just definitely definitely want to have an edge to get in right speaking of your branding um you've you've branched out uh and i i dare i dare to even guess that it has something to do with you know the world shutting down for the past couple of years you uh are both in the professional grade and uh, AAA studios, as well as you produce your own material on OnlyFans. Uh, by the time this is going to come out, a brand new video from uh, Pure Taboo is going to come out called Playing God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, um, Playing God came out. Okay. I was an actor in Playing God, and the other one is called... Some ground rules. Some ground rules, yeah. Yeah, that one's coming out um, next week, yeah. Yeah. By the time this, this air is probably that week. And so I'm pretty excited about that one. That one is uh, my, my first, I guess, leading sex scene. Okay. And and it should be it should be awesome. It's um, with, with Lainey Gray and Penny Barber. 
Wow, really? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So this one being your first leading uh, sex scene, uh, dare I say, a, a main stage performance, what was it like being in the spotlight where you tend to shine? What was it like for you? It was pretty, it was it was actually an amazing experience um, yeah. because prior to that, I've done mostly extra work or, you know, being in a blow bang where it's like, you know, 10, 15 guys. Right. Uh, and, and so it was just, you know, me and the, the two, two amazing, you know, co-stars. And of, of course, uh, the, the, the production, the crew were amazing and I love working with them. It was, you know, it was, it was a new experience for me and I, and I enjoyed it and I'm very excited. You know, mm -hmm. like, uh, my, my girlfriend was asking me today, like, how do you feel? Cause apparently I'm, I don't get excited too often about many things. Really? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very nonchalant, humble more so, but very nonchalant about things. But she asked me like, so how do you feel? And I said, she, I'm excited as fuck. And she's like, wow, that's a first. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm pretty excited, man. Um, yeah, it, it, should, it should be good. Mm -hmm. Working with, with everyone was like amazing. And, and, and actually Penny Barber was like, is like one of my favorite porn stars, even before I worked with her, she was like at the top of my list as far as who I wanted to work with. No doubt. And yeah, it was, it was so crazy. I, have, I was just writing it in my goals, like that day, like I want to work with her. And then I got the and call. Check. <laughs> yeah. I got the call sheet like, like five hours later and she was on there. I said, no way. <laughs> You know, start writing down other names real quick. Oh, well, I've been I've been writing ever since. You know, manifestation. You know, I've been writing every day. It's been working. It's, been, it's definitely been working. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, when, given the opportunity, like, um, cause you do a lot of custom work as well as your own work on sites like OnlyFans and many vids and, and the like, what's it like? Because you have a lot of freedom when you're working your own material as opposed to having a studio and a cast and a director and a set and all that stuff. Like if given the opportunity, like, what do you pick? Right. Right. Well, uh, I, I think it's a place uh, for both of them. Okay. When I'm producing my own work, um, especially with my date night series, right. It's, it's just an extension of myself as far as what I would do on any normal basis, just using a, a, a female talent, you know, as my date. Right. Um, uh, and, 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 but as a producer, it's so much that goes into that where it's like, I'm hiring the talent, I'm hiring, you know, the, the, the camera crew, hiring makeup artists, securing the location. And, you know, quite honestly, it's relatively, it's, it's rather expensive, right? You know, to produce your own content in, in the manner in which I do. But it's like, at the end of the day, I'm able to be proud of what I put out. And it's more of a learning experience as well. Because mm. I mean, I have an MBA. So I have that business background. Right. And so it's like, okay, well, you know, what's the, you know, what's the break even? on whatever I spend, you right. know, and, and you know, what's the ROI. So, you know, from, from that, ex, you know, from that perspective, it's very rewarding. And I, I just produced my fourth installment of the date night series with Kira Noir mm -hmm. should be coming out pretty soon. And, and you know, it was just a, a great experience, but you know, on the opposite side, when you're working with studios, you know, it allows you to, get out in a uh, a much broader fan base and acquire new fans and you know work with different talents that you may not uh, would have worked with if you had to produce your own content right so it's, it's, it's definitely a uh, pros pros to to both avenues it's just you know they both serve their purpose you know i, I don't believe in just doing one over the other mm. but you know it's you, you, you just get different benefits. You know, one, you can monetize, you know, forever, like annuity versus one time is a one time payment. Right. You know, when you work with studio. Right. So, you know, it, it, it you know, it's definitely a, a benefits for both. Mm -hmm. What is the date night series for anyone who is just unaware? Yeah. So the date night series is essentially where uh, me and, and uh, a beautiful young lady goes on a date 
have a good time, and then we come back for uh, to get a little bit more intimate. Right. And it's very sexy, very um, n- you know, nicely done as far from a directorial and a, a cinematic perspective. Um, and it's, it, it gives you, uh, I don't know, just more of an insight on how I think and, and, and how, you know, who I am at, at my core. Mm. Yeah, you- I, kind of, I kind of look at porn in a different way where it's more, more sophisticated, mm. more sexy, more sensual. And so I just want to give people a glimpse of just how I look at porn because I, you know, I didn't watch too much. I, I don't watch too much porn these days. Maybe when I was younger, right? Because it was like it was boring, you know. And that's how I felt about porn, right? And so I said, well, let me come out with something that I wouldn't mind watching, or a husband and his wife would would love to watch on a on a Saturday night, right. or a young lady when she's by herself and want to have some me time, she could put on one of my videos and and you know enjoy her evening mm. with a, a nice glass of wine you know so i want to pr- provide something for uh people who want something a little bit more qu- high quality as well as when you're trying to connect with your partner or when you want to connect more with yourself mm. i don't i don't want to put you in a position to bash things from the past but what was it about uh porn when you were younger that you found boring it was just so like it was, okay number one it was like like the corny music <laughs> you know and then yeah. it was like i felt that it didn't focus at all on the the the, the female viewers I, I feel like porn is very um geared towards uh male viewers mm. also porn is not necessarily how everyone else has regular sex no, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, so, I mean, un- unfortunately, you know, as you, as you grow up, you think that porn is how you're supposed to have sex. And that's not the case. Oh, God, you know? no. It's like you have to be a, a porn stars or sexual athletes, okay? And so, even even with me, it's like, okay, well, shit, when, I, when I'm with my girlfriend, we have sex completely different than when I'm on set. Right. You know what I'm saying? But so, in my date night series, I do try to have uh, more realistic sex right. as opposed to, you know, what you often see on, 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 you know, on the videos, you know, it's like, yo, there's like, I'm not jumping from the building and doing a power driver to a doggy. You know? <laughs> like, that's not real sex. No, you know? no, no, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I just want something just a little more authentic as far as how I do it. You know what I'm saying? I will use my girlfriend, but she's in corporate America <laughs> and she's not ha- having no parts of it. <laughs> yeah, no. So I use, I use uh, porn stars instead. Yeah, no, totally, totally makes sense. <laughs> Uh, you you hinted earlier about being a, a producer. Is that an avenue that you want to move forward with within the industry? Because like okay. as, as you as you said, like you you have a mind for business. You have an education for business. Being an actor and producing your own stuff, and you know, I I'm, I can only assume that the date night uh, series. I mean, it's not just a camcorder and then move from there. There are steps to it, and there are elements behind the scenes is being a producer or you know a, more of an executive or behind the scenes in the adult industry somewhere you're going to travel down yeah I, I i you know i like of course i like being you know you know in front of the camera but i also like being behind the camera because you know it, it allows me to use my skill sets like in, a, in an optimal way um so i really a- appreciate the opportunity to be a producer because my entry into the adult industry was like, okay, number one, no one knows me. No one knows who I am. Right. And so the opportunities to get different gigs are probably going to be very, uh, you know, sparse. So I said, well, let me start producing my own films, you know, and then if someone wants to hire me, then they hire me, but at least I'm going to have content out there that someone's going to enjoy watching. Right. You know, and, and so, you know, I definitely want to get more into to producing. Uh, I, I want to get more into directing as well. I think that's more later down the line. And I want to um, get into like writing scripts. And, um, you know, my big focus is on just high quality, high quality content where 
the acting is, you know, next level. Mm. Uh, production is next level. And, and so, you know, I think that's what's next for me. Speaking of things that are coming up next, you just recently had a, an appearance at Erotica in Chicago. And you have another appearance uh, coming up in Miami in July. What, what is it like being a, a talent at one of these events? It's a lot of work, number one. There's a lot of there's a lot of work. It's, it's, a, it's a huge investment. Mm. But I would say being a male performer is completely different from being a female performer. Okay. And being a new performer is different from being everything. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's like who? No one knows me. I don't have any fans. You know. <laughs> and and so you know, uh, it, it was it was an interesting, um, great experience. I got to meet a lot of new people, and people got to. Meet get to know a little bit more who John Legendary is. I got to see some of my favorite porn stars. So that was pretty cool. Mm. Uh, but it was, it was a good experience. Uh, but uh, there, there's only a couple male performers that actually go to Exotica. But I look at it for me as a way to, you know, let people know more about who I am and, and what I'm offering. And, you know, just uh, t- to be on the lookout for me. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, I definitely feel that I've been one of um, be in this industry for a while mm. but um, i feel the the female talent uh they they usually have like lines especially the the, the more successful they have lines like waiting for them right. i don't have lines you know <laughs> not not yet not, not yet, yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> you know so uh it's 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 definitely interesting just seeing the type of people who come it's a, it's a, it's a good mix of people that that attend the events and um you know they're they're well attended uh, but it was just a just a good experience just being in that environment and see how uh, people navigate and, 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 you know, how the performers engage with their fans. So, you know, it's, it's a really good, it's good way of the fans coming out to see the people that they admire. Hmm. Um, and, and one day, hopefully, um, I have those lines and be able to give that merchandise to, uh, you know, my, my future fans. What? is in the near future and even in the distant future for John Legendary? So I'm going to continue producing um, for my Date Night series. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I will be releasing Date Nights um, Volume 4 in the next couple of weeks with Kara Noir. And so be on the lookout for that. Um, also have another hot Date Night series coming up, I think, next next month in, okay. in July. So that, that was, that's going to be pretty hot as well. And uh, yeah, Exotica, I'll be in Exotica for July and, and we'll definitely be continuing to put out some good content, good hot wife content on my OnlyFans and many vids. Awesome. Where can people find you online and find the stuff that you create? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram and, tw- and Twitter okay. at nonlegendary underscore and you can also find me on OnlyFans and many vids. Just type in John Legendary, and you should be able to find me on there. And and when you subscribe to my OnlyFans, you get access to all of my videos and content. And um, it's no no pay per view or anything like that. You get everything. Mm. Um, and then you can always catch my date night series on many vids. Yeah. And keep an eye out for some ground rules from Pure Taboo. Oh yeah, and that that's gonna be hot. That's gonna be hot. <laughs> John, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. Oh, thanks for having me. Appreciate it.